nasa item number 14 tayo, right? 14. The question is, which of the following might be detected by an auditor's review if the applying sales cut off? So how is the sales cut off test performed by the auditor? Now, when performing this type of test, we need to examine, so we have to follow the sales books of the company for two consecutive months. If the company's balance sheet date say it's December 31, 18, we'll follow the sales books of the company or the sales journals. Again, for two months, okay, one is December 2018, tapos the other one is January 2019. We did not examine all the sales transactions recorded during the whole month, but in the last few days lang of the uh, December, the uh, December uh, 2018, saka yung first few days lang ng January, say from January to 1 to 7. You will be applying vouching, that is you will be examining supporting documentation of the sales entries made by the company. Objective that then to determine if uh, those sales recorded during these last few days of the year represent the legitimate sales of that period. Tapos yung sa January, ganun din. So ang pwede natin makita, sales taken up in December that actually are January sales. So ibig sabihin, overstated to. For sales of January, pero dito naman, ano, sales ng December dito pinaso, understated to. Okay, and naman, sales of January dito pumunta, overstated naman to. So, what is our objective then in performing the test to detect material misstatements? Kaya pag ang tanong sa atin, what type of test is a sales cut of test, answer is it must be a substantive test procedure. Kasi nga ang objective natin to detect material misstatements. At kung substantive test procedure yan, so you must be verifying assertions of management di ba concerning sales. Okay, and what are those assert assertions that can be verified? Nakita natin kung lahat ng dapat i-record, na-record, di ba, in December. In fact, may nakita tayong hindi na-record, di ba? That is something to do with completeness assertion of management, di ba, concerning transactions and events. Management asserts that all transactions that should have been recorded have been recorded. So, isa yun sa i-verify natin. Another uh, assertion, that can be verified is cut off at pag sinabing cut off assertion management asserts that the uh, transactions were taken up in the correct accounting period. Na nga may nanguhuli tayong diba, December na January pumasok, January na December pumasok. Now, sa exam, pag nagtanong about assertions that can be verified, hanap ka ng isa dyan sa dalawa. In most cases, completeness ibibigay sa iyo sa choices kasi yung cut-off, part na ng completeness actually yan. When you perform the procedure, di ba? Okay, when you verify completeness, automatically, nabe-verify mo na din yung cut-off test, uh, cut-off assertion nila, right? Ngayon, kailan mo gagawin yan, procedure na yan? Can we perform this before the balance sheet date? Depende ba sa, uh, sa assessment natin na based of material misstatement dyan? Uh, okay, kagaya ng ibang napag-uusapan na kapag mataas ang RMM, we should have set a low level of detection risk na dapat, ano, dapat uh, at year-end mo gagawin. Meaning, ang i-audit mo yung year-end balance. O katumbas pa ng iba yan ng RMM mo mababa, and you're willing to accept a high level of detection risk, so you may perform the test at an interim date. The answer, no. Okay, hindi siya kasama sa risk assessment natin for purposes of determining when to perform the test. Okay, this substantive test procedure, you should always perform after the balance sheet date. So, sulit ko lang, always perform after the balance sheet date. Kailangan lagpas muna yung taon 
para makuha mo yung January. Now, you will ask, di ba pwede ng hindi? Pwede namang gawin ko ng December yan. Parang i-audit ko yung November and December. Yes, you may do that. Kaya lang wala akong na-accomplishing. Isipin mo. Pag ganun po ginawa yan, ang makikita mo doon, November na pumasok ng December. December na pumasok ng November. Totoo na pwede may makita kang statement for the month of November and also for the month of December. Pero bear in mind na ang audit natin, annual eh, di ba? Ino-audit natin yung buong taon from January to December. So yung November na pumasok ng December, December na pumasok ng November, lahat naman yun ay record in the current year eh. Walang problema doon. Ang may problema dito, kasi pwedeng succeeding year sales na current year pumasok or current year sales na succeeding year pumasok. So that you should perform after the balance date. Walang risk assessment or similar. Okay? Now going back now to number 14, sagot na tayo. Sabi sa A, so ulitin ko lang, which of the following might be detected by an auditor's review of the blind sales cut-off According to A, we can detect excessive goods return for credit and we don't agree with that. Diba? Nag-sales cut-off test tayo. Sales yan. Hindi naman return siya ni. Hindi nga natin alam po. Alin dyan yung mga nag-soli at mag-soli pa, right? So, mali yung letter A. Eh, kung itanong sa'yo, what will you examine so you can detect excessive goods return for credit? Then you should examine sales returns. Diba? Tignan mo kung gano'ng kalaki yung returns. Okay, during the period. Diba? So, you may talk to procedure, examine sales returns. What about boy, in the unrecorded sales discounts? Kailan ba may discount? Pag nagbayad yung customer within the discount period, diba? Pag nagbayad, may nagbayad na, wala pa, bumili pa lang eh, diba? So, what will you examine? So, you can detect unrecorded sales discounts. Then you should examine cash receipts. Diba? Hilamin mo yung cash receipts book nila, Kumuha ka ng sample, tignan mo kung yung mga nagbayad within the discount period eh, na record na ng discount. Kasi pag hindi na i-record, o di unrecorded yun, yan pakinote mo sa letter boy, uh, cash receipts. Intindi ito na yun, examination of cash receipts, di ba? What about lapping in C? Can we detect lapping? And what is lapping in the first place? Well, lapping is a way Okay, to conceal, di ba, the shortage, at hindi, di ba, the, the fraud committed, di ba, lapping. Okay, yung uh, fraud doon, yung pag nanakaw ng collection eh, we call it what? Embezzlement, di ba? So, para makover up yun, may lapping. Okay, now, kasi pag fraud, yun ang susunod dating topic pamaya, may intention to deceive eh. Di ba, fraud is panloloko eh, di ba? Wala namang nagplano, di ba, na magnapaw dahil ang gusto niya, mahuli siya. Di ba, magnanapaw ako, sana mahuli ako, hindi ganun, di ba? Mapulong sana ako. No, hindi ganun eh, kasi niya, enjoy yung ninapaw niya eh. Kaya, may cover up. Di ba, kaya napakadelikado nga ng walang segregation eh. Kasi kung cashier na, tapos accountant pa, kaya-kaya niyang magnapaw, cashier siya eh. Kaya-kaya niyang i-cover up through lapping yung ginawa niyang embezzlement. O kaya naman, pinaghiwalay na lahat, nagka-connivance naman. Kaya nga, connivance is an inherent limitation. So, paano nag-work ang lapping? Pwento lang yun. Halimbawa, nag-connive si X, saka si Y. Si X kasi yung cashier, si Y yung accountant. So, nag-usap sila, o, oh, magnakaw tayo. Oh, sure, sabi ng isang kausap niya. Okay, gawin natin, tutan ikaw ang cashier, ikaw ang magnakaw. Diba, hawak mo yung cashier. Pag may nagbayad at cash, Okay, tapo ka agad sa labas, text mo ko, magpagbihan tayo doon. Ganun ka simple eh. Okay, kung ito yung gate ng kumpanya, nag-guardian dyan, di ba? Okay, ito yung damuhan. Okay, dito sila sa likod ng damuhan, nagpapatihan. Ang usapan, 50-50, ating kapatid. Eh, tiyempo-tiyempo naman, nagbayad yung si customer A. Medyo malaki, 100,000. O di, bursa agad ni cashier yan, di ba? Punta agad sa labas, paano mapaghati ang nilang dalawa? So, di magkano silang dalawa, ito na sila eh. Tuntua, di ba? Easy money, di 50,000. Di ba? Hati yan, kasi 50-50, ating kapatid eh. So, tuntua, hindi nga lang sila makapagsaya ng todo kasi kaya lang yung guarding. Kaya, nagkakatawa na, siyempre, sobrang saya nila, kaya... Impit na impit lang. Yun lang. Yun yung lapin, di ba? 
pag-uusapan natin sa cash audit yan eh. Kasi pag nag-debit ka ng cash and you don't have the intention to report in, mahuli siya talaga eh. Back record lang, huli na yun eh. Kaya hindi siya gagawa. Kaya lang, may problema sila kay A. Diba? Kasi, uh, diba, malalo pag nalaman ni A na may balansin pa siya, gayong bayad na siya. Delikado yung, diba, dalawang to. Ang gagawin nila dyan, iintayin nilang magbayad yung si B. Okay, kanyang eh, nagbayad si B ng 150,000. Dito nagagawa ng entry yung accountant. Pero bago pa ng entry, bubulsa muna itong 50,000. Hati na naman sila. Okay, tapos igagawa ng entry, debiting cash, yung 100,000 lang na iniwan. Crediting AR, but the account of A will be credited for the payment made by B. Yun yung lang tingi. Diba? I-apply sa ibang customer yung payment ng isang customer. O di ibig sabihin, aksuwento na sila, sila kay A. Kasi may kaya-credit na to, hindi naman ang concern ni A kung kailan siya na i-credit. Basta, as far as A is concerned, alam niya wala na siyang utang, okay na yun. Diba? Kaya may problema sila ngayon kay B. At kumalaki yan, 150,000. Yun yung, di ba, na-embezzle nila eh. Okay, kaya ano gagawin niyo? Iintayin naman mag-bayad si... Hmm, si Sida, kahit hindi alphabetical. <laughs> Gusto mo pa alphabetical ng bayaran? Hindi, kung sino ka una. O sige na nga, para huwag ka mabaya. Si C. Para hapti ka din, lahat ka din. Okay, tapos, ay kaya credit si B. Hindi ko na isusulat, pero ganun yun. Dinitilay yung recording, yung posting. Okay, para makover up yung ginawa doon sa naunang nagbayad. Tuloy-tuloy yan, hanggat hindi nagkakabubuhan. Ano pang buko dyan? yung mabus, mabusising examination of collections, diba? Para ma-relate doon sa sino ba nagbayad, kailan ba yung, diba? Pagbabayad. Or, isang simple paraan, confirmation. Kaya nga, kontrolado natin dapat confirmation kasi sabi ko na sa iyo dati pa, pag uh, hindi mo kinontrol yan, hindi sila papayag na makarating yan sa dapat puntahan, lalo na yung kalokohan silang ginawa. Right? Yan, pakinoot mo sa letter C, confirmation. You know, normally, pantapal. Yeah, the choice therefore is dog, siyempre, inflated sales for the year. Inflated is overstated. Pwede rin namang understated, di ba? But it's, it's specified, inflated. Pero walang masama kahit understated na makita mo, bibilugan pa rin natin, ha? Kaya lang bakit hindi, in general na lang, stated sales? Bakit inflated? Kasi nga, yan ang mas pangkaraniwang ginugusto ng maraming kumpanya, di ba? To overstate sales para maganda yung financial performance nila. Tama? So, the choice must be letter go. Number 15. Which of the following most likely would give the most assurance concerning the valuation and allocation assertion of accounts receivable? Pag sinabing valuation ng AR, what do we mean? The amount that is expected to be collected, it's net realizable value. Diba? Yan ang proper valuation ng AR, net realizable value. And to arrive at that amount, we deduct from the AR balance the related allowances. Tama? Okay, ang very common nga, ang pangkaraniwang material, okay, in, uh, when you compare those uh, that with the other allowances, yung allowance for uncollectible accounts, right? Kaya, if it's about valuation, you need to examine also the related allowance. Yun yung nasa letter, though, Assessing the allowance for the collectible accounts for reasonableness. Bakit there is mention of reasonableness in this statement? Kasi allowance determination involves what? Estimates. And when you audit accounting estimates, ang concern natin is not accuracy of the estimates made, but the reasonableness of the amount. Kaya pag-inoot mo sa tabi ng reasonableness, accounting estimates. Para matandaan natin, so it's dog. Number 16. Dinify lang yung confirmation sa unang statement. Huwag na natin basahin ngayon. Kau na lang. Yung kasunod, we read, two assertions for which confirmation of accounts receivable balances provides primary evidence of what? Sinulat natin sa whiteboard last time, di ba? Na kapag kinonfirm yung balance, dalawa agad yung assertions na na-verify natin. Una, that the receivables exist. 
existence. Pangalawa, that the receivables are owned by the company. Tama? Okay, rights and obligations. Yeah, the choice is low. Yung A mali, na-prove natin ang completeness malabo kapag confirmation of AR, di ba? Kasi pag completeness, ang yan ang possible understatements. At kapag understatement, may tendency yung customer, huwag kumibo kasi pabor sa kanya yun. Yung valuation, we discussed that in number 15, that you have to, di ba, examine the related allowance, so hindi confirmation lang. Now, for the, uh, that reason, mali pa rin yung boy, kasi may completeness, C is also incorrect kasi my valuation. Diba? The choice therefore is wrong. 17. When an auditor does not receive replies to positive requests for year and A or confirmations, the auditor most likely would what? Binanggit bang first or second request na? Walang binanggit eh. Pag walang binanggit, default assumption, first request pa lang. Kaya pag hindi bumalik, yung pinag-usapan natin last time, you said the customer a second confirmation. The answer, C. 18. The return of positive accounts receivable confirmation without an exception attests to what? For example, without confirmation, the balance was confirmed by the customer. Tama? Okay, it attests to what? So, anong na-prove natin? Well, it's either collectability in A or accuracy in B, C, or D. Isa doon, di ba, pipiliin natin. It means about accuracy. Pero totoo bang collectability o accuracy nga? Pag ba nang utang yung kaibigan mo sa'yo, eh, Dr. Amant, nakasalubong mo, kinonfirm niya yung utang niya. Best thing, sabi sa'yo may utang kong 1,000 na. Okay. Ibig sabihin ba ng collectible? Hindi, kinonfirm niya lang na may utang siya. Inacknowledge niya lang na may utang siya sa'yo, di ba? Kasi after so many years, nakita kayo ulit, may mga anak na kayo, pamilya na, ikaw nakasampo na, okay na anak, siya naman ay siyang. Tapos, inacknowledge siya ulit, nagconfirm siya ulit. Best thing, o mga anak, siya yung pinagkakautangan natin. Sabi niya, one, two, three, mabuhay. Okay. Di, di ba, pinagmalaki ka pa doon sa, sa mga anak niya. So, natay ba siya? Hindi pa rin. Nag-confirm lang siya. Sipin mo ilang taon na yon. Hanggang sa dumating yung point na malungkot na pangyayari, nagkasakit siya at uh, ilang oras na lang at pupuli na siya ni Lord at pinatawag ka. Pwede. So, natuluyan siya na Okay, confirm ng confirm. Hindi naman siya nagbabayad. So, rule out natin collectability in that case, right? Hindi kapag in-acknowledge yung liability, magbabayad na yung may utang. Okay, kaya mas doon muna tayo sa accuracy. Kasi kinonfirm niya, di accurate, di ba? Ang alin, yung balance, yun ang kinonfirm niya. Kaya sa BCD na natira, we should choose C. Accuracy of the receivables, balance. So, Yung collectability, hindi masyado, ha? mas accuracy. 19. Which of the following procedures would an auditor most likely perform for the and AL confirmations when the auditor did not receive replies to second requests? Pag sinabing second na, uh, gagawin mo na dyan, alternative procedures na, di ba? And of the two alternative procedures, ano yung mas maganda? That you will examine what? Subsequent cash receipts. Kaya hinihiramin mo yung cash this is your dal ng cliente, and you examine it. Okay, yung letter A. Review the cash receipts journal. Ay, mali. Diba? Mali. Bakit? Sinabi bang subsequent? Hindi. Ang sabi dyan, prior to year end. So, mali yan. Pakihalit mo yung prior. Dila ang dahilan. Kaya mali, you change that to subsequent. So, ingat sa mga ganun. Isang term lang yun. Okay, kaya dahil hindi pwede yan, okay, what's the other alternative procedure that you have to consider? Well, you apply vouching. That is, you examine documents supporting the accounts receivable balance. Diba? Nasa letter do. Kasi anong document yun? Siyempre, shipping documents. Diba? Okay, to prove that the merchandise or the goods were actually shipped and sold by the company to the customer. So, the choice therefore is let the dog inspect the shipping records documenting the merchandise sold to the debtors. Tama yun. 20. Which of the following audit procedures is the most appropriate when internal control over cash is weak or when a client requests an investigation of cash transactions? So, balik sa risk assessment. Pag ang RMM 
mataas kasi CR is mataas, then we should accept a low level of detection risk. And that means what? Okay, then we have to perform more detailed, more extensive substantive test procedures at year end. So, completo yun. More detailed, that must be referring to the nature of the substantive test to be applied. Tapos, more extensive, extend. Tapos, at year end sa timing. Just sa choices, walang mention about uh, the timing. Diba? Wala namang year end na binanggit yan. Wala namang mention about the extent of the procedures to be applied. Right? Meron dyan yung mga iba't ibang classing tests na gagawin natin. So, this must be referring to the nature of the test. Diba? Kung more detailed pa, yun ang pipiliin natin. Then, we uh, will choose a more detailed diba, substantive test procedure. Kaya dapat, test of details, not analytic review. So, for that reason, i-out na natin agad yung dog. Diba? Yung evaluation of ratio of cash to current liabilities is an application of what? Analytic review procedure. Eh, hindi na yan. Kasi less detailed yan eh. Kaya pipili tayong isa sa tatlo. But, pero huwag na natin piliin yung C. Pag nag-bank recon ka, may bank balance na yung recon sa FS of Oak. Hanga? How do we audit that bank balance? We examine the bank statement. At dahil nga alam natin pwede manipulated na rin yun, we request the bank to confirm the amount directly to us na magpapadala pa ng cash confirmation sa bank, right? Okay, ngayon, sa proof of cash ka natin, may bank balance ka din yung audit, papadala ka din ng confirmation request sa bank po. What I'm saying is, yung item C cash confirmation is part of A and B. Diba? Pag ginawa mo yung A or B, ginawa mo na rin yung C, siyempre. Yeah, don't I keep feeling sa A and B? Of course, you know the answer to this, diba? Yung bank record na binanggit sa boy, kahit wala sabihin, that must be referring to a simple bank record. A simple bank record will reconcile balances as of one date only, diba? At tawag din yun ay one date reconciliation. Kaya for that reason, labang na yung A. Kasi sa proof of cash, we reconcile balances as of how many dates na naman. May isa pa siyang lamang. We reconcile also the cash transactions during the period. And what are those cash transactions, receipts, and disbursements? Kaya nga, ang proof of cash, apat ang columns eh. Diba? Dalawa para sa balances, dalawa para sa receipts and disbursements. Kaya talagang more detail kahit sa andaan niya. Diba? Letter A is the answer. 21. Which of the following procedures would an auditor most likely perform in auditing the statement of cash flows? Similar to what is done in practice, when we conduct an audit of the company's FS, we start from the audit of the statement of financial position. Kasi when we do that, okay, uh, some of the income statement items can be simultaneously verified. Diba? Limbawa, when you audit PPE, ano ba pwede mo nang isabay doon? Depreciation expense. And what about intangibles? Amortization. AR. Question ito, audit the allowance account. In discussion, pwede na for devaluation. And when you do that, ano tatamaan? Budget expense. Tama ba? So, marami pwede nang isabayin. Kaya pagkatapos mo ng statement of financial position, balik ka sa income statement, tapusin mo yung mga hindi mo pa na take up, right? Saka pa lang pupunta sa statement of cash flows. Bakit siya sa dulo? Para wala ka ng vouching, wala ka ng compare-compare, wala ka ng mga uh, procedures na ginawa mo doon sa unang dalawa. Kasi yung nasa statement of cash flows, nasaan? Nandun din sa dalawa yun eh. Nagagawin mo nila, reconcile mo yung amount appearing in the statement of cash flows to the amounts appearing in the other two basic FS that you already audited. Tama? Okay, kaya hahanapin natin yun. Reconcile. Mali na yung A. Reconcile. Mali na yung C. Ang dalawang reconcile, yung boy sa kando. Diyan ka manibili. Bigyan tingin, pwede ang uh, mabilogan natin yung boy. Man. Sabi niya, reconcile the cut of bank statements to verify the accuracy of the year and bank balances. This you will do when you audit bad cash. In this statement of cash flows, bad cash. Sa bank record niya, di ba? Ang pinihingi ka ng cut of bank statement. Pag sinabing cut of put all, hindi yung bank statement ha, yung period. Pwede mo lang January 1 hanggang January 10 lang. Kasi objective mo lang, mag-verify pa yung year end reconciliation or reconciling items niya, di ba? Kaya hindi mo kailangan isang buong buwan. 
So, yung A, uh, A, uh, A procedure that you will apply when you audit cash, a statement of cash flows of the Gosapa natin eh. The choice must be letter low. The next, 22. An auditor selected items for test counts while observing a client's physical inventory. So, ano audit procedures and inventory? Kung practical, okay, you observe the count, the physical count of inventory. Kung practical. Pag hindi practical, hindi mo na magawa kasi tapos na. Halimbawa, okay, may mga alternative procedures dapat na i-consider. Pero doon mo na tayo magsa sa mag-observe tayo ng count. Bago pa dumating yung date of count, may mga preparasyon na yan. Pinaplano ng mabuti yan. In fact, pwede ka pang mahinga ng advice tungkol sa mga gagawin nila activities sa pagbibilang para mas may assurance that the count will be efficient and accurate. Tapos, bago din dumating yung petsang yan, yung laman ng bodega, yung mga items na bibilangin, iaayos na yan. Kung pinag-uusapan natin, eh, lata-latang mantika, okay, panluto, cooking oil, dapat nakakamadal ng maayos yan. Hindi pwedeng ang gulo-gulo tapos sa kabibilangin, di ba? Isa pa sa preparasyon, bukod sa pag-aayos, yung pag-print ng tinatawag na inventory tags. Pwedeng cartoon yun, pwedeng computer print out yun, ina-attach sa bawat item na bibilangin. Indicated here, anong item yon, ilan yung nabilang, tapos sino nagbilang, may initials, sino nag-countercheck, may initials. Dapat yung inventory tags na to, pre-numbered, para makontrol natin lahat. Okay, pre-numbered. So, i-account po lahat yan. Hanggang anong number ang nagamit. Yung nagamit, evidensya yon na nag i yung items. Kasi may inventory tag, ibig sabihin, nabilang yun eh, di ba? And of the... Uh, the tags printed, ilan naman yung na-cancel o na-void kasi mali yung entry, kinancel na lang, ilan yung unused. So, accounted for every copy of the inventory tag dahil nga baka, baka tambakan ng tambakan yung inventory na hindi naman nag-exist na living. Yeah, particular tayo doon sa mga nagamit na evidencing diwa, the count that was conducted. Okay, kasi igagawa ngayon to ng listahan tawag ay inventory list. Inilista yung mga item. Okay, kung ilan yung nabilang, basis sa inventory tag, okay, kunyari, 100, at magkano yung kanyang unit cost, kunyari, 10, para ma-extend dito, magkano yung cost ni item ay 1,000. Gagawin yan for all the items, tapos ibababa yung total, ito na yung ending inventory nila. Okay, kapag periodic, wala naman silang inventory account pa sa libro, di ba? Ikagawa ng entry to set up the ending. Debit inventory ending, di ba, 100,000, and then credit income summary, or some companies use cost of sales as a temporary account. Para yung beginning sa ka-purchase sa sasara din dito, para makita nila magkano ang cost of sales for the period, saka isasara sa income summary. So, kumbaga, i-instation muna sa cost of sales. 100,000. Ang point, pag mali ang bilang, mali ito. Pag mali ito, mali repes. Kaya nga handyan tayo para mag-audit. Diba? Basta pag nag-audit ka ng inventory, huwag na huwag mong kakalimutan na go-audit ka ng asset. Huwag mo rin kakalimutan na management might have incentives to overstate this, right? Kaya ang concern natin, existence. Para makahanap tayo ng possible overstatement. Diba? Okay, kaya nandun ka to observe. Pag sinabing observe, nakatayo ka lang. Hindi, dapat kumuha ka ng items na itetest mo. Pwede ka lang sumabay sa pagbibila, but you not pay 100% count kasi hindi naman ikaw part ng count team eh. Diba? Nag-audit ka. So, you can select a sample. Kung masyadong marami. Pero kung pupunti, walang masama kong lahat. Diba? Pero kung marami naman, test check ka na lang, di ba? Okay, so bilangin mo. Tapos para kontrolado mo yung mga inventory tags na na subject mo to your test count, pwede initialan mo kahit sa ang corner dyan o kahit sa gitna pa para isasummarize mo kasi yan sa dulo. Okay, pero bago natin puntahan yun. Okay, eh, dapat again bantayan na baka naisang ka ng printing, may tendency magsama yan pero hindi naman nag-exist. Yung nakakamadang mga data dyan, eto. Kunyari, isinabject mo to your test count, tapos umabot ng 50 yung bilang mo. 
Then over check po talaga ng 15, nag-initial ka sa inventory tag 15. Hindi ka na kontento, binila mo pa ng pabaligtad. 50, 49, 48, 47, tama pa rin. So, pabante, pabaligtad, patras, okay, tama yung 15. Pero sa totoo, kwarenta lang pala. Paano nangyari yun? Walang laman yung sampu. So, yung ibang kliente, nagsisigit ng ganun, di ba? Paano mo i-verify yun? Well, you have to verify that hanggang sa abot lang na pwede natin gawin, ha? Okay, hindi na pwede gawin, eh, huwag na. Okay, so ano, paano gagawin natin? Lahat na ito ng mantika. Okay, magdala ka ng ice cream, pag bubutasin mo, di ba? O ha, nila mga tao, ha? Ito, o ha? O ha? Ayun, o. Okay, ayun, o. Okay. Tapos kaya nga mo lahat yan. Okay, siyempre. Siyempre, hindi mo gagawin yun. Magtatapos na yung mantika, di duulasan lahat sila. Okay, so, what? Bubuhatin mo? Okay, nakaayos na yan, eh. Bubuksan mo, kung pabayaan mo. Kasi baka umanta na yan eh, sealed na yan eh. Diba? So what will you do? So may senya yung silba. Tama yun, katukin mo. Yun ang pwede mong gawin. Diba? Katukin. Diba yung tunog ng may laman sa walang laman? Kasi yung lata ko ito. Ay, ito, ito. Ay, ito, wala. Ay, ito, ito. Ay, ito, ang daming walang laman. Pakicheck mo nga yung katabi mo kung meron. <laughs> Meron yan. Siyempre, meron yan. Okay, so yun na. Ito pa isa. Tignan mo kung itong sinusugat ko na ito. Ano ito? Ito yung items na binilang mo nung tinignan mo sa taas. Kasi nasa baba tayo magbilang eh, di ba? Okay, 50. Pero pag pala pag tinignan mo sa taas, Okay, ito makikit mo ito. Okay, ito. Walang gitna. Parang bumili ka ng ano, ng peanut butter sa Baguio. Yung nasa, pag binaksa mo, di ba? Excited ka na. Masarap eh. Huh? Yes, ito yung daliling mo. Di ba? Walang gitna. Hello. So, may isang ka ng priority mo. Pag ganyan, pag wala kang ginawa. So, what can you do? Well, Kung kailangan, akyatin mo. Now you will ask, paano ko aakyat? Sa bawat bodega, lalo't malalaki yung items, may lata-latang ganyan. May fork lip dyan. Kasi yun ang pang, di ba, pang ulsin sa mga items says, makisakay ka doon. <laughs> Exciting nga yun. Di ba? Kung carry mo, di ba, kaya dapat makita mo. Yun, kung babae ka, di ba, tapos kaya kasama ka namang lalaki, ba't naman ikaw pa? Di yung lalaki. Di ba, sabi mo, lalaki ka naman, ikaw na. Ano ba't kung ayaw niya? Tapos nagalit pa, sabi siya, Hoy! Ito po, ang sabi mo, ito. So, sa so, totoo lang, di ba naman kailangan gawin na yun eh. Why? Yun na lang kliyente mo, pa-akyatid mo, di ba? E di niloko lang ako, sasabihin mo, ba't ka paloloko? So, paano ka hindi paloloko sa client? Pabunan mo, di ba, sa CP mo, nang nga, Kasi nga mag-selfie ka, pag-selfie mo, para makita mo yung gitna, na hindi ka naman umakit na. Iba nung panahon namin sa panahon nyo eh, ngayon marami ng style eh. Nung panahon namin, uh, may telepono, pero landline, di ba? Yung walang-walang picture-picture. <laughs> so, dadaling ko ba sa taas yun, tapos doon tao, Hello? Ako, oh, gusto ka na? <laughs> okay? Hindi pwede, kaya gumagawa pa kami halos nun eh, para makita mo eh. Di ba? Okay, pero kayo, wala kayo na pira. Kaya lang, kung kakailangan din talagang umakyat, aakyat ka. Kaya ladies of this class, kapag ka, alam mo naman magiging ganitari at may akyatan, huwag ka na mag-inster. Di ba? Kasi bubulo eh. O nasa taas ka, isipin mo, forklip lang ang tuntungan mo. O di na kaganyan ka. O ano mangyayari sa baba, eh di naghintuan na sa pag-ibilang. Nakatigala na lahat. Okay? O siyempre, eto ako, di ba? Okay. Ang gabi ko. Okay, o di ba? Pero ganyan, may pinsapin. Di ba? Sa kaguguluin, exposure and exposure, di ba? I-inventory ko ka, kami naman bilang ng bilang sa mga, okay, mga peklat mo. O di mo pwede gusto lang ano ngayon ko, cash cow. Okay, sa dati na ito. Kaya, parang ako, ano ako Okay, yung iba pa, game is activity. Okay, so, tuloy na natin ito. So, nakapag-test, nakapag kaunta na, 
may initials mo na yung inventory stats, di ba? Para makontrol mo nga. Gagawa mo ng summary yun, working paper mo yun. Tapos yung mga inventory tags na yun, kahit sa summary na lang, manapin mo sa listing. Yung tag, yan yung, list, yan yung document lumalabas. Yung listing, yan yung accounting record kasi yun yung ginawa nila. So, ano direction mo from the document to the accounting record? Nag-tracing ka dyan. Diba? Pag-tracing, ganun eh, direction. Inventory tag to the uh, listing or document to the accounting record. Ano gusto mo improve? Kasi yung tag, ano na yan eh? Ibig sabihin, nag-exist yan. May tag eh. Nabilang mo nga eh. Gusto mo improve kung lahat ng tags sumama sa listing kung kompleto yung listing. So, this is something to do with completeness. Then, kapag pabaliktad, okay, kumuha ka ng sample from the inventory list, tapos sinanapan mo ng inventory tags, ang concern natin dito, baka kasi nagsama ng mga items sa listahan, hindi naman talaga nag-exist. Kasi wala namang inventory tag. Di ba? Okay, kaya ito naman yung vouching na sinasabi. Vouching is examining supporting documents. Yan, from the record to the document. Ano gusto mong alamin? Kung yun nasa listahan, they represent items that actually exist. So, existence ito. Kahit anong account ang pinag-uusapan, if it's vouching, it's existence. If it's uh, tracing, it's completeness. Magka-partner yan eh. Now, going back to the item, di ba pinanggit pa nga traced o di tracing yan? Di ba? Tapos sinabi pa direction, test comes to the client's inventory listing. Test comes as evidence by inventory tags o di document to record ang tapo niya. Di ba? At tracing ha? Kaya anong tanong? This procedure most likely obtain evidence concerning what assertion of management na sagot na natin, completeness. Di ba? The choice is going. Napakinote mo na lang sa bit tracing. Tapos sa C, existence. Don't make note yung vouching. Tapos gusto mo, idagdag mo yung direction of test na pag tracing from the document to the record, pag naman vouching from the record to the document. Bahala ka mag-doon. Tapos sila natin, then we'll take our claim. In 23, the primary source of info to be reported about litigation claims and assessments is common mistake lawyer in Sasaba letter A. But, kasi ang tanong sa atin, primary source of info eh. Ang primary source, yung client. So, kaya yun ang initial step mo. To discuss this matter with management, inquire about what? The company's policies and procedures in accounting for what? Litigation claims and assessments. Diba? Yun ang alamin natin from the client. Yan yung letter C. Ngayon, dahil yung info we receive from management, from the client, that may not be that reliable. Kaya we need to but consider communicating with the lawyer. Kaya pagpasok yung lawyer sa usapan. Pakinote mo sa tabi ng lawyer to corroborate information provided by management. Kasi siya may mas reliable. Una, expert siya. Diba sa field niya? Pangalawa, galing sa labas yung evidence eh. And that's more reliable than diba, internally generated evidence. Okay, na tayo doon ha. So, let's see talaga ang sagot natin. Pag naiba yung tanong, how do we collaborate? What all the procedure to apply to collaborate the info? Kasi tungkol sa collaboration ng mga info, okay, doon yan ang may hahanapin natin sa sagot. So, the choice is C. 24. Which of the following is an audit procedure that an auditor most likely will perform concerning litigation claims and assessments? Nabanggit ko na yung initial step natin, yun yung letter C. Discuss with management, policies and procedures adapted for evaluating and accounting for litigation claims and assessments. Saan ka makikipag-communicate with lawyers? Do we have to go personally to the office of the lawyer and discuss personally matters with such lawyer in the papadala lang tayo ng confirmation, tawag yun, letter of audit inquiry. Gagawa ng kliyente mo, ikaw eh, magpapadala sa lawyer. Ikaw ay yung kliyente yung gumawa, scope limitation yun. Nagpagawa yung kliyente, bumayag, okay? Hindi namang lawyer ang ayos sumagot, scope limitation yun. Okay? So let us see the answer. 25. The following are ordinarily excluded from audit documentation. Alin ang hindi natin isasama daw. Una, superseded drafts of working papers and financial statements. Of course, diba superseded na yun? Wag na. So yes, tayo sa una. Those that reflect incomplete or preliminary thinking, another yes. 
Google lang, pagpati lang ng document natin. We have copies of documents collected for typo errors. Okay, yes, huwag mo isama kasi may collected na yung collected na lang. The last duplicates of documents, lalong yes, hindi natin dapat isama or dapat i-exclude natin. Why? We don't file din, gagalit na yung timo. We don't file invoices, di ba? We, we just indicate in the working papers that we examine those documents. Di ba ba? You know, dito yung sales ng Amonte 100 by examining the invoice, kung magkano man ito, pwedeng lagyan mo ng tick, ng, tag ng tick mark, SI. Tapos explain mo sa ilalim ng working paper mo, examine sales invoice numbers, di ba? Tapos indicate mo yung numbers, 143 to 153, dated ganito. So i-indicate mo na lang yung procedure. Hindi mo ipapile yung mismong document. Hiniramin mo yun, so sorry mo sa kanila. Okay, maliban doon sa mga importanting documentation, like, like uh, say for example, contracts, eh, may copy tayo nun. Diba? Minutes of meetings, may copy tayo nun. Okay, kaya the choice therefore is what? Letter A, yes to all, meaning excluded lahat. 26, audit documentation may be recorded on paper or on electronic or other media. The following are examples of audit documentation, yung nga lang sa dulo may accept. So, yung hindi natin isasama. Simple po, di yung hindi sa atin, huwag natin isama. Atin ba yung A? Yes, tayo gumawa niyan pagkatapos ng risk assessment, sa lang bubuin yan eh. Eh yung boy? Yes. Di ba sa atin pang pinadiretso sa God? Eh yung C? Ganun din. Kaya the choice must be letter though. Obviously, di ba accounting records of the company yan, kanila yan, hinihiram lang. So letter though. 27. The completion of the assembly of the final audit file after the date of the report does not ordinarily involve. Sa dulo, pag malapit na deadline, mas ang concern na natin dyan, matapos ang audit, hindi maiayos ang working papers. Kaya lumalabas, pangkaraniwan, nirelease yung report ng hindi pa maayos yung working papers. At alam ng standard dyan, kaya ang PSQC, merong requirement, di ba? Di ba na ano yun? That we have to complete the assembly of the final audit file within 60 days from the date of the report. Nandiyan sa handout mo yun pag pinasa mo, makikita mo. Okay, so, yun yun. E ano hindi mo daw gagawin? Kasi sabi sa 27, does not ordinarily involve. Hindi mo gagawin yung A, and that is the answer. Bakit? Tapos na audit mo. Hindi na pwede mag-perform ng additional, di ba, audit procedures. Baka magka-conflict pa yun sa opinion na binigay mo daw sa FS na namilis mo na yung, yung report naman. Okay, kaya aayusin na lang na literal. Ano yung mga gagawin? E di po, para maayos, isort, ikulain, etc. E di si, yung mga hindi dapat kasama, kagaya ng number 25, itatanggalin mo na. Diba? Kaya nga sabi niya, superseded documentation. Okay, e, so what about dog? Yes, of course. Kaya the choice must be letter A. Bawal na yan. Tapos na auditing. And finally, 28. The primary, the primary reason auditor's close index and working papers is to bigyan kita idea matututunan mo to sa, sa practice mo na sa documentation natin meron tayong tinatawag na working trial balance diba? yun din yung worksheet na natutunan mo sa college o working trial balance sa practice mas maganda yan paghihiwalayin Merong para sa balance sheet or statement of financial position, kaya WPS. Merong para sa income statement, working profit or loss of income statement. Ano ka present, alimbawa, sa WPS? Hindi na yung individual accounts. Ano ka present na yung line items na kung paano sila ipipresent sa FS. So for the current assets, ang makikita mo dito, hindi individual cash accounts, di ba? But cash and cash equivalents a line item. Meron kang column for the working paper reference. Meron kang column for the per book balance. Kunyari 1 million. Meron kang for adjustments and reclassifications. Kunyari 0.2. Okay, tapos may per audit column ka which is 1.2 in the example. Gagawin mo yan hanggang sa equity. Lahat lang nasa statement of financial position. So isang working paper yan. They should have an index kumbaga page number. Pwede gamitin mo WBS as the index of this working paper. Okay? So, kaya nasaan itong mga ito? Pwede ba maraming accounts yan sa GL? Yes. 
So what is that working paper that you have to prepare to show the components of this line item and other line items in this uh, working balance sheet? Tawag doon lead schedule. So igawa mo ng lead schedule or top schedule para makita dito yung components ng bawat item. So dito mo makikita yung petty cash file, yung cash in bank nila sa Metro Bank, cash in bank account nila sa BPI, pati yung iba pang mga cash and cash equivalents. Okay? Anong column headings? Pareho lang. May working paper reference ka, per books, okay, adjustments and reclassifications, tapos per audit balances. Yung per audit, yan ay yung pupunta mismo sa FS. Diba? Okay, so nandito na yung individual account balances na nasa GL, adjustments that you made, tapos per audit of each of the accounts. Na pag tinotal mo, okay, pag tinotal mo, Okay, kunyari, ito yung 1 million, ito yung 0.2, ito yung 1.2 million, ito yung dinala mo doon. Meron din siyang sariling index, syempre, working paper dito eh. Pwede ka mag-assign ng alphabetic counter, say A. Okay, and again, ito yung dinala mo doon, di ba? So, ilalagay mo sa ilalim to WBS. Para alam nang babasa kung saan mo dinala to, saan mo nilipad, di ba? or saan mo makikita. Tapos, sa pinuntahan, lagay mo kung saan siya galing. Yan yung natawag na close indexing. Ibang term is close referencing. Eh, nasaan yung uh, working paper mo for petty cash audit mo? Okay, tawag doon supporting schedules. Gagawa ka ng supporting schedules. So, Halimbawa, sa petty cash, may cash count sheet ka. So, this is another working paper, di ba? Na may index din siya. Para hindi magulo, mamatitling kayo dyan, don't you worry. Diba ito, this one, anak nito? Diba, ayun siya. Okay, petty cash fund. So, pwede mong i-assign dito, alphanumeric, A plus 1. Tapos, yung amount na dinala mo sa A, okay, kung po, si index mo, lagay mo to A. Pagdating kay A, lagay mo dito, A plus 1. Ganun na. Okay, kunyari, may attachment dito. Okay, para pintak sila, Diba? A dash 1 over 1. Lahat ng attachments mo naman. Over 2, over 3. Puro A dash 1 sila. Sa pag-asay ng index, tawag indexing. Sa pag, uh, diba, pag-indicate kung saan pumunta, saan galing, that's cross-indexing. Okay. Ano advantage? Kahit saan buksan yung documentation mo, may free. Hindi mawawala, hindi mag-review sa'yo. Diba? Pakihanap mo yung sagot na makapag-type na tayo. Yung train, di ba nasa dog? Provide a train for the auditor and the reviewer. Pero yung pang pangalan na working client balance yun, lead schedule to, supporting schedules. Okay, so we take a short break. Tapos, uh, sa coverage ng mga first three board, lahat, kaya na hindi lahat. Okay, paano yun? Okay. Focus kayo doon sa na-take-off na. Pero well, misa kasi sa mga lectures natin, di ba, nag-mention tayo ng mga topics na wala pa naman talaga sa ano, like the, the opinion of which place, madalas natin din nabanggit yun. Pwede magtanong ng gano'n, di ba, kahit hindi pa natin na-take-off. Pero rest assured na yung mga questions that pertain to those things or topics that we have not yet discussed, okay, will be very, very easy questions para sa inyo. Para okay, okay, at para talagang uh, maging patas na, yung code of ethics, medyo mahaba yun eh. Huwag yun ang unang aralin. Okay, kasi, diba, kung magtatanong man, yung napanggit lang sa klase, yung mga ethical principles, nasa isang hand-out natin yun eh. Pero yung, okay, malalim pa doon, hindi na, huwag na rin yung accountancy act. Maliban siyempre doon sa mga binabanggit na, like this scope of practice, di ba, nababanggit naman yun. Basta mga ganun, okay, ang focus doon sa mga na kung nanating topics at madi-discuss pa before the first labor examination. Okay, so for uh, the second half, okay, punta natin 8407. Tingin ko, practical kung dediretso na tayo sa multiple choice questions sa material na to, para yung discussion natin ng concept, through the multiple choice questions na. Mag-aangal naman din. This is about fraud and error. Kapat matutuloy ko yung matutuloy ng fraud. 
Kalau paginya memang gitu Kita di bagi Okey Pernah tak sebab mana Takut Pernah huli kadang dah lawi dalam kita Okey Then what must be the distinction Between fraud and error Siapa yang nak tulis intention juga Okey For me intention to deceive That must be fraud Pag wala namang intention An honest mistake That must be an error Okay, but concern natin for purposes of uh, determining what opinion to render, hindi yung fraud mismo o hindi yung error mismo. Yung result, di ba? Kung may material statement in the FS resulting from the fraud or error committed. Kasi kung wala, kahit fraud or error yun, unmodified binigay natin. O ganyan, binigay to unmodified opinion. Dahil wala namang material effect, dahil wala namang material statement. Hindi tayo nag-modify ng opinion dahil may fraud tayong na-detect. Remember that? Okay, nag-modify tayo kasi may material misstatement tayong nakita o material misstatement na hindi natin na-detect because of lack of evidence. Diba? So, yun ang issue doon. Ngayon, baka itanong sa'yo, may mga tanong like, which of the following are examples of fraud? Or which of the following are examples of fraud? Uh, or the following, which of the following is an example of fraud? Pala, isa lang. On which of the following is an example of error? Okay, kaya you should know the distinction nga, yung intention. Okay, ang importante doon, yung alam mo kung yung binabasa mo may intention kahit wala pa yung term na intention si statement. Halimbawa, embezzlement of receipts, ano yun? Fraud or error? Fraud na yun, kasi may intention eh, embezzlement, pag nanakaw na yan eh. Hindi na kailangan sabihin pa, intentional embezzlement, hindi ganun yun. Diba? O kaya naman, stealing the company's assets or intellectual property. Fraud na yun, naglangkaw yun. Hindi na kailan sabihin pang intentional stealing. Diba? Okay, kaya medyo pakikiramdaman yun yung mga choices. Diba? Mas importante na sa isip natin, pag may fraud na, pag may intentional, fraud na yun. Yun, pag tinanong ka naman, which is more difficult, uh, difficult to detect, is it misstatement arising from fraud or misstatement arising from error? Well, it must be arising from fraud kasi nga, in fraud, there is that intention. Binanggit ko na kanina, walang nagnakaw para mahuli. Nagnakaw siya para i-enjoy yung nilakaw niya, di ba? So there must be a way to conceal it. Di ba? Dahil may concealment sa fraud, mas mahirap yung detect. May concealment eh, than error. Ang error, honest mistake yan eh. Nung i-post yung entry, para yung na-i-debit. Di ba? So error lang yun. Alam na nabang pakinabangin niya yung nangyari yun, di ba? So, ano mag-bubooking doon? Ano mag-detect doon? Yung client balance. Hindi ba balance eh? As simple as that. Di ba? Kaya, mas madali. So, punta tayo sa wala. Which of the following best finds fraud in a financial statement auditing context? Yun nga. But fraud is that intention and you look for that statement, yun yung letter boy. Kasi yung fraud, yung fraud daw ang intentional, di? Fraud is intentional. Okay, tayo doon. Boy na yan. Number two, fraud involving one or more members of management or those charged with governance is referred to as what? There are two types of fraud kung pag-uusapan yun ang perfect way yung gumawa. May tinatawag tayo management fraud and we have what we call employee fraud. And that's self-explanatory. Siyempre, pag management ang involved, management fraud yun. Employee, employee fraud yun. Ay binanggit sa statement management thing. So, the choice, therefore, is letter A, management fraud. Paano kung may connivance with third parties, yung management? Ano natawag? Management fraud pa rin, kasi sila pa rin yung primarily responsible for the act that was committed. Okay? So, letter A. Ganun din sa employee fraud. With or without connivance with the third parties, employee fraud pa rin matawagin. Yun naman C at D are the other two types, the other types of fraud. Okay, fraudulent financial and misappropriation of assets. And you should also know the distinction. Nasa number three. Fraudulent financial reporting involves intentional misstatements, including omissions of amounts or disclosures in FS to deceive financial statement users. Tama yan. Yan yung tinatawag na fraudulent financial reporting. Diba? An example of that is what we call window dressing. You know, overstate ang assets, kaya kayo na pinapantayan natin mabuti, understated ang liabilities, overstated ang revenue, understated ang expenses, to show a favorable financial position and performance. 
na hindi naman totoo, di ba? Okay, talk to the fraudulent financial reporting. Kaya just the choices, pag may kinalaman sa records o sa FS na deliberately listated, that must be fraudulent financial, yun yung letter dog. Again, an example of fraudulent, yung window tracing, ha? tawag doon window tracing. Pinapapogi o pinapaganda, yung FS kaya hindi totoo. Yan ang huwag na huwag yung gagawin ha, lalit mga kababaihan, window dressing. Bakit? Matutuwa kapitbahay. No, diba? So, let her dog sagot. Number four. Which of the following conditions are generally present when misstatements due to fraud occur? Pag daw may fraud, generally, alin dito ang present? One, incentive or pressure. Diba, nakakapakinig tayo ng mga balita? Okay, bakit ninakawal yung kasambahay yung amo niya? Kasi hindi maganda ang relasyon ni Lane. Kung sabihin hindi maganda ang relasyon, kami break lang nila, hindi. Okay, hindi maganda ang plato sa kanya. Diba yung ganun balita? Minaman plato po ako, kaya nagpili mong isip ko. Minapoko po yung, diba, yung kids ng ama ko. Diba? Okay, so kung ano ba yung minapoko, pera, lahas, diba? Kasi nagka-incentive siya. Sa isang kumpanya, ganun din eh. Ang sinasabing incentive. Yung hindi maganda ang relasyon ng employer sa ka-employee. Ano pa yung nasabi yung incentive? Yung nabalitaan yung masisisante na siya. Ano pa yung isang halimbawa na incentive? Yung ang tagal-tagal niya na, hindi siya maplumot-plumot. Diba? May increases na hindi siya happy. Diba? So incentive ko tawagin. Ano naman yung pressure? Yung kasambahay kaya nagnakaw kasi nakatanggap ng, diba, ng text na kailangan natin ng ganito kalaking halaga. Para kay Bunso, yung ganung, ganung story, ha, diba? Kailangan natin pa-operahan. Mag-pressure siya ngayon. Hindi niya alam saan pupunti. Nag-nakaw. Siyempre mali yun, diba? Okay, sa so, kumpanya, ganun din. Diba? Pwede may financial difficulty employee, nag-pressure, nag-nakaw. Sa part naman ng management, hinahanapan ng napakataas na standard ng performance, hindi maibigay, o oh, hindi nag-window dress. Diba? Fraudulent financial. Incentive or pressure kung tawagin. Ngayon, check tayo sa one. Pag ba may fraud, present din yung two? Yes, hindi naman puro incentive lang eh. Kahit sa masama ang loob niya, nakaw na nakaw na siya, eh hindi naman niya magawa kasi ang pinag-iintisya niya yung nakawin yung heavy equipment ng kumpanya. Hindi <laughs> naman nagaling yun, di ba? Okay, so wala siyang opportunity ng gawin yun. Tapos, ang higpit pa ng control, di ba? Bago mo ilabas yun, papano? Okay, kaya ano yung opportunity? Una, tinutukoy dyan yung characteristics ng asset na pwede mong manakaw eh. Diba? Pwede mong manakaw na magnanakaw eh. Gaya na ano, yung maliliit na items. Yun ang mas may opportunity yung manakaw. Tama? Madaling gawin eh. Ano pa? Yung inadequacy ng control system nila. Lack of physical controls. Bakit nagnakaw ka? Mabait naman ang amo mo. E kakalat-kalat lang mo yung pera eh. Natukso ko. Diba? Lack of physical controls. Dapat yun nakatago para wala siyang opportunity mana ko yun. Tama? Ya, check din tayo sa two. Eh, yung pangatlo, rationalization, check pa rin. Kasi yan yung pag-justify ng ginawa ni Lane. Diba? Kaya yung tatlo eh, uh, elements, palaging present yan pag may fraud. The choice must be two. Hindi ang ibig sabihin, pag present yung tatlo, may fraud. Ibig sabihin ng pinag-usapan natin, pag may fraud, generally, nakikita natin itong tatlong to. At yan sa tatlong yan, pag inote mo, yung one and two, kung tawagin ay fraud risk factors. Obligasyon natin, di ba, sa audit, to make an assessment of the risk of material misstatement. Yung misstatement, pinag-usapan before, pwedeng caused by fraud yun, caused by error. Kaya, yung risk assessment na ginagawa natin, kasama ang fraud doon. Diba? Assessing the risk of material misstatement that may be caused by fraud. Kaya pag may nakita tayong incentive or pressure, may nakita tayong opportunity to commit fraud, pinadodocument sa atin yan. At part ng risk assessment natin yan, para malaman ano responses natin. Dodocument mo din yun. Kaya tawag yung fraud risk factors. Letter dog tayo sa number four. Dahil ang tinatanong yan, early means, hindi naman fraud risk factors. Number five. Who is most likely to perpetrate fraudulent financial reporting? Kaya ng ma management yan. Manipulation ng records yan eh, di ba? Kaya nilang i-ignore yung system para lang magawa yung gusto nilang gawin. Empleyado malabo kasi, di ba? Kung hindi naman 
uh, kung ano yung management na hindi sila pwede. Okay, kaya mas management. So the choice is letter C. Number six, with obtaining an understanding of the entity and its environment, including its internal control, the auditor may identify events or conditions that indicate an, pakihalit natin, incentive or pressure to commit fraud or provide an, ayit pa tayo, opportunity. Such events or conditions are referred to as what? Napag-usapan na, we call them fraud race factors, the choice is void. Ang ito document yung na-identify mo lang na presenta sa kliyente. Hindi lahat ng possible conditions na papasok sa isip natin, to document natin to be fraud race factors, yun lang identify na present sa kumpanya. Number seven, the following are examples of fraud risk factors relating to misstatements arising from misappropriation of assets, except remember dalawa lang ang types of fraud. Kung hindi misappropriation, fraudulent financial reporting. Sabi ka, misappropriation, except so ang tinutukoy, fraudulent financial. Diba? So alin dyan yung may kinalaman sa fraudulent financial reporting. Dali lang yun. Basta may kinalaman sa records, Diba? Sa documents, sa FS, fraudulent financial yun. The choice is A. Simple mo, negative cash flows from operating, mas malaki labas kaysa pasok ng pera. Tapos, uh, ang nakareport sa income statement, earnings and earnings growth, so may inconsistency, okay, mag-investigate tayo dyan. Diba? So the choice must be letter A. Yung BCD, pag hindi sa isa, all of them relate more to misappropriation of assets. Sa iyong sabi nga, may binagit pang asset eh. Sa do, ganun din eh. Diba? So, misappropriation of assets tawa dyan. Kaya kapag nililaliman pa ng konti, eh, baka sakaling itanong din, pati yung risk factor na na-identify mo. Ano yung letter B? Again, kapag opportunity ang pinag-uusapan yung asset mismo, diba? Saka yung lack of physical controls or lack of pa an adequate control system, diba? Kasama pa yung B? Or ano-ano pa lang uh, uh, risk factor yung B? Hmm. Inadequate physical safeguards. So, may kinalaman sa inadequacy ng control. This creates an opportunity to commit fraud. Eh, yung C. Ganun din. Opportunity. Eh, yung dog. Adverse relationship between the entity and the employees. Hindi magandang relasyon. Ibig sabihin natin yan, okay, that creates incentive or pressure. So all of them relate to misappropriation, ha? pero pag uh, nagtanong about specific risk factor, andyan na, yung B ang, okay, isa kasi magkasama, di ba, bukod yung letter do. BNC opportunity, yung dog is incentive or pressure. So letter E. Number E, opportunities to misappropriate assets in ways when there are one. So ayan ulit, opportunity, lack of pa. Uh, Controls, di ba? Inadequate controls o kaya nung characteristics ng asset. Yung A, incentive or pressure yan eh. Binagit ko kanina. Yung boy, ganun din eh. Nabanggit din kanina. Pati yung letter C. Di ba? Sabi ko, hindi happy ba sa mga okay, nangyayari. So, A, B, C, pakinote mo, incentive slash pressure. Ang bibilogan natin, yung dog. Wala namang sinabi, inadequate yung control. Oo, pero dinescribe yung asset. At sa description, madaling mana. Oh, sabi dyan, small in size. Diba? Of high value in, or in high demand. Yan ang mga paboritong ninanakaw. Kaya nga kami magkapatid sa totoo lang. Ingat na ingat. Diba? Nakawin kami eh. Okay, so. <laughs> Dahil of high value kami. Hindi, that is small in size lang. So, number eight, letter dog. Number nine, Which of the following conditions or events may create incentive or pressure to commit fraud? Okay, ni ikot-ikot eh. Diba? Kasi yan ang mga pwede maritanong sa atin tungkol sa fraud. Incentive or pressure naman. Is it A? Ang kamakasanayan mo na yan eh. Hindi. Diba? System yan eh. Pag inadequate system, opportunity yun. Is it boy? Lack of mandatory vacations for employees performing key control functions. Saan? Saan? siya dapat sumama, incentive or pressure or opportunity. Kasi kapag incentive or pressure, bilugan na natin. Ano ba yung mandatory vacation? Pagkaraniwan yan, one week vacation leave. Diba? Manda leave yun kung tawagin nila, okay, na kung saan makakapagtahinga ka. 
O kaya kaya iba, nilulook forward yan. Yung may gumaginagawang kalokohan, kinatatakutan yan. Kasi during that uh, period, may ibang gagawa ng ginagawa niya eh. Diba? Doon maraming pwedeng makita. Kasi wala siya doon eh. So mabubungka lahat ng pwedeng bungkalin eh. Tama? Na property naman ng kumpanya kaya pwede. Diba? So yung lack of mandatory, okay, hindi incentive or pressure yan. Mas ang dating yan, opportunity. Kasi walang mandatory vacation eh. Okay, iba kasi mali ang interpretasyon. Akala nila, nagtampo yung empleyado. Kaya incentive or pressure, hindi. Kala nila, limbawa, isang empleyada, alam niya, pag March, okay, meron siyang mandali na one week. Kaya pag tuntong ng March man, talagang pagpasok niya, kasi gusto niya, nakabitch siya, nakababad sa beach. Na pag uh, pasok niya ng March man, talagang nakabating suit na siya. Okay, eh, hindi tuloy. Nagtampo daw, ninakaw ang alin, yung kultina, wala siyang damitin. Okay, so, hindi gano'n yun. Basta control po siya, tignan. Walang manda, Uh, vacation, okay, kaya walang titingin sa trabaho niya. Okay, kaya little boy opportunity pa rin. Yung see ang pressure, binanggit pa nga eh. Excessive pressure, bilugan mo na. Yung dog, isama mo sa A B. Silang tatlo, opportunity. Tignan mo, puro uh, inadipo si sa control. Number 10, which of the following statements is correct about an auditor's responsibility regarding consideration of fraud in a financial statement audit? Ano responsibility natin? Hindi naman to detect fraud eh, di ba? Pero part yan sa risk assessment procedures natin. Di ba? Remember na yung risk assessment, okay, our procedures, our procedures we apply so we can what? Make an assessment of the risk of material misstatement that may be caused by fraud or error. So, kasama yung fraud eh. Diba? So, pag tinanong, ano obligasyon natin, hanapin mo yun ang sagot. Yung letter do. The auditor should assess the risks of material misstatement due to fraud. Tama. Part ng risk assessment natin yung required yun eh. Diba? Nasa standard yun eh. Yung A, anong term kaya nagpasabit sa A? Um, yes, that's absolute. Mali yun. E yung B, Mm -hmm. Yung errors, kasi it's about fraud, di ba? Responsibility for fraud. Eh, puro error binanggit yan eh. So, nang gugulo lang yan. Plus yung any misstatements, mas doon tayo sa material eh. Yung letter C. Yes, yung 100%. Walang requirement that we have to examine all the items, right? Decision natin yun. So, talagang letter to, pag nag-eliminate tayo. Eleven. Which action regarding fraud is an activity related to performance of risk assessment procedures? Alin dito sa risk assessment natin, ginagawa natin? Hmm? Alin dyan? Yung letter daw kasi part pa rin ng assessment of the risk of material misstatement, yung brainstorming or discussion ng mga members of the team. Diba? Letter daw is the answer. Number 12. When the auditor identifies a misstatement in the FS, the auditor should consider whether such a misstatement may be, may be indicative of fraud. And if there is such an indication, the auditor should what? May misstatement daw, tapos duda mo na may fraud daw sa transaction pinag-uusapan. Ano daw ang gagawin mo? Okay, well, fraud na yan eh. Yung fraud and error, pantay lang pagdating sa opinion. Kasi nga ang concern material misstatement, hindi sa pagdating sa risk assessment. Pag risk assessment, iba dating ng fraud sa error. Di ba? Kung baga mo sa matakot yan, may manluloko sa loob ng kumpanya, di ba? So, pwedeng tumaas ang assessment natin dahil doon. Tama ba? Andoon yung possibility na may material misstatement, kaya itataas natin ang risk assessment natin. Ngayon, nakita mo daw ganun. Anong gagawin mo? May, may indikasyon daw na may fraud. Okay, yung letter C, communicate the input to regulatory and enforcement authorities. Punta ka ka agad doon. Kung hindi man police station, okay, punta ka sa barangay. Kung ano man yung mauna mong takuan, tumakbo ka ka agad. Tapos magpanik ka doon, may fraud, may fraud, may fraud. Okay, para hindi ka napalisin. Okay, siyempre mali yun. Diba? Ano muna mong gagawin? Hindi naman withdrawal agad, di ba? Sayang naman yung kliyente. Yung letter A muna, tignan mo muna yung implikasyon ng nakita mo sa audit na gagawin mo. Di ba? Para matansya mo anong extent ng procedures, anong nature, kasama pa rin sa planning. So, the choice must be letter A. 
13. An auditor's consideration of the risk of material misstatement due to fraud and the results of auditors indicate ito iba to, a significant risk of fraud. Kanina, indicative, ito hindi, significant risk of fraud. The auditor should what? Kunahan kita. Yung A and B malabo. Kanina pa natin, nuulit-ulit, di ba? Na ang opinion, imamodify mo kapag may material misstatement, hindi kapag may fraud. Yung effect ng fraud na magiging dahilan ng modification. Kaya out na yung A at B, sabay na sila. So, C at D tayo. Yun ang letter C kanina, di ba? Hindi pwede. Kaya letter doon talaga. Okay, consider mo na lang with row 1. Now, if you will ask, if ito kanina, hindi. Eh, may mas una pa itong gagawin eh. Eh, ito, significant risk. Tapos, wala naman yung sinasabi, di ba? Na mauna kanina. Dala mo, with row 1 natin, nakamaganda. Number 14. As used in PSA 250, the title is Consideration of Laws and Regulations in an Audit of Financial Statements, this term, yung pinapahanap sa atin, refers to acts of omission or commission. So, pwede may ginawa, walang ginawa. By the entity being audited, dapat yung plenty mo involved. Either intentional or unintentional. So, wala na dito yung usapang pag-intentional, fraud, di ba? Wala na ganun. Which are, neto ang king, contrary to prevailing laws or regulations. Yan ang magpe-prevail. Diba? Kapag yung act of omission or commission involving the entity, kahit pa intentional o hindi, may violation ng laws or regulations, ano daw tawag doon? Well, hindi legal, di ba? Hindi siya sumunod sa batas, illegal act ang tawagin yung letter boy. Mali. <laughs> Bakit? 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 Okay. Hindi mali yung term eh. Hindi mali yung term. Kala tama yung illegal act. Kaya lang kasi ang pagbabasihan ng sagot natin, yung umpisa, as used in PSA 250. Walang illegal act doon eh. Meron non-compliance. So we must choose A. Dahil yun ang gusto niyang itanong sa atin. But these two terms, A and B, are acceptable. Pareho lang kung pwede yan. Diba? Pareho lang na ginagamit yan. Okay, ano yung letter C? Okay, let me demonstrate. Pwede na, baka masasante ako. Okay, so, ngayon din wala na kasi yung time. Next meeting na lang. Kung mapasok pa na ako talaga. Okay, number 15. So, 14 is A, and I'm from Tayas. 15. In order to plan the audit, the auditor should obtain a general understanding of the legal and regulatory framework applicable to the entity and the industry and how the entity is complying with that framework. Ganun lang naman yun eh. Siyempre kasama sa audit natin yan, di ba? Kasi concern natin dyan yung effect ulit eh. Na tatlo yan eh, fraud, error, non-compliance. Ang concern natin sa tatlong yun, may material statement pa sa FS para maka-apekto sa opinion natin, di ba? So non-compliance tayo, nakatutok ngayon. Paano mo i-audit? Well, dalawang steps eh. Una, intindihin mo, alamin mo, ano ba ang mga laws and regulations that are applicable to your client. So, kasama doon yung pag-identify, ano ba mga regulatory authorities or agencies of the government na may jurisdiction sa kliyente mo? Ano ba reportorial requirements sa libawa ng SEC? Diba ng biyara? Okay, para malaman mo saan sila dapat mag-comply. Then, the next thing to do, identify ko na yung mga authorities at yung requirements nila. You will now perform procedures to identify instances of non-compliance. Maghanap ka ngayon ng mga instances na hindi sila nag-comply, then mas yun ang concern natin eh. Kesa yung instances na nag-comply sila. Pag nag-comply, eh di walang effect sa FPS. Yung hindi sila nag-comply, doon may issue, di ba? Kung na-take up properly. Ano ngayon ang tanong? To obtain this understanding, yung unang step, the following procedures would ordinarily be considered by the auditor. Tignan mo yung dulo, highlight mo na, except. So, nagumpisa sa to obtain an understanding, di na po siyang except. Di ang tinatanong sa atin dyan, yung pangalawang step na. Yung alamin na natin kung may mga instances of non-compliance yung kumpanya, tama? Kaya huwag yung A, understanding yan eh. Huwag yung B, kaya siya nagtanong sa management eh. Huwag yung C. Yan lahat kasama sa step 1, obtaining an understanding of the legal and regulatory framework. Diba? Bibilogan natin yung letter to inspect correspondence with relevant licensing or regulatory authorities. Ang SOP kasi, 
Pag meron kang hindi na-comply sa isang regulatory authority, di ba, sa pag-ibig, kunyari, okay, hindi ka nag-report na dapat i-report, okay, makakatanggap ka ng letter from that agency of the government nakalagay kung ano yung hindi ka na-comply, anong sanction tungkol doon. So, yun yung i-evaluate mo, may material effect pa ito sa FS ng PNT ko. Okay, kasi pag meron, di ba, at least may FS, at pag ayaw, eh, pwede ka na mag-qualify doon. At kung pervasive ang effect, pwede ka na mag-adverse opinion doon. Di ba? Kaya yung letter doon ang sagot, kasi tignan mo, identify na yung regulatory authorities eh. I-inspect mo na yung correspondence, ano objective. Yun yun nga, to identify instances of non-compliance. Kaya letter dog, tapos note mo nila, to identify instances of non-compliance. Tapos yung ABC, obtaining an understanding. Sixteen tayo. If the auditor concludes that the non-compliance has a material effect on the FS and is not being properly reflected in the FS, the auditor should express what? may material effect tapos not properly reflected ay di may material statement na pag hindi pervasive qualified pero pag pervasive na adverse the choice is A 17. If the auditor is precluded by the entity from obtaining sufficient appropriate evidence to evaluate whether non-compliance that may be material to the FS is or is likely to have occurred the auditor should express what? So we're talking of what? Scope limitation imposed by the client? Tawag client imposed limitation. Kapag hindi kliyente mo nag-impose, circumstance imposed mo tawagin. At ang issue dito, wala sa scope limitation. Nandoon sa materiality and pervasiveness of the possible misstatement that you were not able to detect for lack of evidence. Na kapag material yung possible misstatement, pero hindi pervasive, qualified. Pero pag material na pervasive pa, ibig sabihin nun, wala tayo sa position magbigay ng opinion, this flavor of opinion. That the choice therefore is boring. We choose between qualified or disclaimer. 18. Under PSA 216, the term is used to describe the role of persons entrusted with the supervision, control, and direction of the entity. Governance. Yan ako sabihin eh. Those charged with governance. Yan ang responsibilities nila. Sa isang malita kumpanya, yung may ahali na. Ang may ganyang responsibility, di ba? Sa isang corporation, yung board of directors nila. Okay, kaya we chose that little boy. 19. According to page 8216, those matters that arise from the audit of financial statements and in the opinion of the auditor are, pwede mong highlight, both important and relevant to those charged with governance at part. In overseeing the financial reporting and disclosure process are called what? We call them matters of governance interest. Kaya natin hinighlight yung important and relevant. Di ba kasi they are matters of governance interest, letter A. Hinahanap sa audit dyan. Hindi. Hindi. Lumilitaw lang yan. When we consider the company's internal control system, hindi ang objective natin to identify weaknesses, pero may lumilitaw. Di ba? Kung significant, ay matulog pa governance interest na yun. Nalimitaw, hindi may nanap. Okay, kaya tignan natin yung 19. O, oh, number 20. Which of the following statements relating to communication of audit matters of governance interest is incorrect? Tignan mo yung A, correct. Audit matters of governance interest include those matters that have come to the attention of the auditor. Tama, yun alaman niya lang. Tignan mo yun yung boy, yun ang mali. Yan ang bibilogan natin kasi incorrect eh. Tignan mo. Should design audit procedures for the specific purpose of identifying matters of governance interest. Kinukuntra niyo yung pinag-uusapan natin, di ba? Na hindi ka mag-ahanap, lilitaw yan. So the choice is boy. Yung 21, audit matters of governance interest to be communicated to those charged with governance ordinarily include what? So, alin dito, examples of matters of governance interest, silang tatlo. Kaya namin sinama para additional, di ba, examples na papasok sa isip nyo. The choice is dog. Huwag naman sana yung dog pa i-memorize mo, di ba? Let's go to our club up on a 2-hand Okay, 22. Ikaw na, nabanggit ko na sa'yo kanina yan. 
na pagkontroleksyon those charts with governance na gre-refer saan the company's board of directors. Diba? The choice is letter C. Okay, dapat ito. 